I cannot play back this cassette for copyright reasons, but I got this one. Hi everyone, today we won't be talking about a vintage film camera or not even something that is vintage, but something that tries to look vintage. I'm talking about this guy, the Ricatech PR85. So why PR85? I mean, the first one I reviewed was the PR1980 because it was meant to look like a 1980s radio cassette. This one with this uh, excellent wood grain, LGR would love it, it's called the PR85. And I cannot figure out why. Well, but that's not the only stranger thing about this thing. Anyways, it's a classical mono looking, and it is actually mono, radio cassette recorder. And it has this a tuning knob, volume control, which like the other one is uh, pretty sensitive. As soon as you turn on the volume knob, it gets loud, well, almost too loud. Then you have the band selector, FM, AM, shortwave 1 and shortwave 2, a microphone and a function selector, tape, radio and USB. The USB in the front is the only telltale that this is not a vintage machine. It looks vintage -y and I mean, it's pretty nice looking. My girlfriend likes it. so. On the right side of it you have this uh, phone's output and uh, a DC 6 volt input jack which is uh, pretty much useless. I would have preferred some circuitry and it being made to accept 12 volts so you could run it onto a car or something. This uh, radio cassette on the back also has a compartment for batteries and here they are. I know they are not identical but I won't leave them in there so don't worry about them leaking. You also have this AC plug-in and a voltage selector mold that is not there and they say 110 220 volts. Hello, 1995 is calling, they want their voltages back. Yes, we changed to 230 volts here in 1996, so 110 220, it's 1970s itch. Or they just did that so it looks more vintage. And on the back of it you have the PR85 Ricatech uh, label. Obviously it's made in China and uh, Ricotech seems to be a brand from the Netherlands. Okay, now let's um, give it a try for FM radio and I'm gonna be quick because I, I don't want a copyright strike and um, the reception is pretty good. Let's check this out. <laughs> Yes, it's pretty good, although I'm surrounded by woods and it's sometimes difficult to catch something onto the radio. I tried it in the city after buying it and uh, it worked just fine. The stations on FM were bloated with the reception. It has a very good sensitivity, although it's a digital radio, it's not analog, it's a digital radio with an analog display. Let's try this on AM. I know who my enemy is. It's called Copyright Strike. Well, I, I was kind of surprised to get uh, some Green Day music on 2 AM. And on Shortwave, you also get something. Let's just listen. And so this is definitely something that is um, good re quality radio reception. Pretty surprised about it. Now let's try the cassette. And yes, that sounds really bad. It sounds like a bad azimuth. And sadly enough, you have an azimuth notch for adjusting the screw, which is right here. But on the cassette door, you don't have anything to access with a screwdriver. So I'm going to try to wiggle the cassette inside without closing up the door and adjusting it. And okay.
Yes, that's definitely better now. And besides it being some kind of an approximate way to set the azimuth, it sounds better now. And obviously you can get a look at the heads. There is a mono head, it's a mono machine with a permanent erase head, which has to be expected on these cheaper mechanisms, and a Tanishin-like mechanism inside. Now let's give this a try with an SD card. The buttons are pretty stiff. Uh, right now it's on the table and there are some batteries inside. But if I was to remove the batteries it would slip over. And, and I mean, the cassette door is pretty stiff too and when you want to close it up, you see, you literally rock the whole machine together. Well, it works pretty fine and that was to be expected, honestly. But now I'm gonna try to record something onto this uh, MTech Ferro Extra tape and then Unlike Tony from CassetteComeback.com, I got my back to advance the tape at the right spot and let's uh, record something. Okay, well, the quality of the recording ain't that good, and uh, well, the noise it makes at the end, just listen. Yeah, that's not a very good signal to noise ratio, but uh, that was to be expected on a machine like this, and it's not worse or better than what you would get from a cassette recorder from the 1990s, honestly. And some of you guys probably want to see what's inside. Let's have a look. So there it is. Uh, on, this, on the other side we have this main transformer with the full bridge rectifier over here connected to this board. I'm pretty sure underneath here we're gonna find a, a capacitor for smoothing up the, the AC. This is, uh, I'm not touching anything, don't worry. Uh, this is the potentiometer for the radio, the chip for the radio. Let's have a look at the chip if we can read something. There we are. Okay. And this is the whole mechanism. Tanishin copy with a, a motor drive. The motor has a Mabuchi logo, but uh, I've heard that they were counterfeit motors. Six volts. Mm -hmm. The belts are easily accessible and, uh, well, this I can touch. You can easily order some belts if yours has a wow and flutter. This one has no issue whatsoever. And um, strikingly enough, this is the motor with um, the adjusting potentiometer. And on the back side, you can see there is a hole right here. So I could easily access this with a, an isolated screwdriver to adjust the motor speed. You can admire the quality of the mold. Well, I'm being sarcastic, but anyways, it does the job. And this is the MP3 module over there. There we have it. The speaker, four ohms, eight watts. Kind of a beefy speaker and a beefy magnet, just a bit. And can we have a look underneath the board? Wow, we don't see anything. And I'm not willing to open up everything. Huh? These are some filter caps over there. Switches. Yeah. That's the gut shot. I know some of you guys are gonna like this. With the cassette on pause, you can hear there is this residual noise. And sadly, that's part and parcel of having um, an entry-level machine like this. Even back in the 90s, that was already the case. So what are my final thoughts on the Rikatek PR85? Well, you know the saying, you get what you pay for, and that thing is 40 bucks. 
I mean, with 40 bucks you have a half a tank of gasoline these days. Some people even say that these machines are useless and a waste of time and money. But remember, that it's only 40 bucks and 40 bucks in 2022 is equivalent to that amount of money in 1995. So yeah, it's entry level. It's a cheap machine, what would you expect? Well, once I set the azimuth properly, the cassette player was uh, working properly, the radio is excellent, I mean, we got reception, MP3 player with SD card, I didn't use the USB stick, but it probably works the same, it's obviously working pretty fine, this is a pretty simple machine after all, and um, it's only 40 bucks, it's pretty cheap. And that's not different from um, machines like this you were able to get in the 1980s or the 90s. These are low-end machines meant to be, do a purpose, allowing you to listen to music. I wouldn't use it for recording cassettes. Uh, the recording quality ain't that good. But for playing back cassettes uh, in the office or, or the workshop or, well, while traveling or camping or whatever, I think it's a decent looking machine and it looks great. I mean, my girlfriend likes it, so uh, I'm not gonna complain about it. At least she won't uh, complain that I bought this to review on YouTube. And I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna probably sell the other one, but definitely this one is a keeper. But anyways, that's all I've got for you today. As always, uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.